Here are some of our favorite stories of people getting stuck in unusual places. <laughs> First up, the Texas teen who got tangled up in her seatbelt. No matter how hard she tries, she can't seem to get out. Her mother can't believe it. Oh my god, are you like a five-year-old? I don't know how this happens. Seriously. Gracie Davidson was in the back seat of her mom's car heading home after a soccer game when she fell asleep. When she woke up, she found that her seatbelt was tightly wrapped around her waist and she couldn't release it. I laid down because I was tired. And then when we pulled into the Bucky's uh, gas station, I sat up and unbuckled my seatbelt and it came up on the side of my stomach and um, it locked up at the top right here. And I was like, oh no, this is not good. <laughs> The police were called in to help. <laughs> Firefighters also showed up to lend a hand. They actually told me that they thought they were responding to a child stuck in the seatbelt. And then when they arrived, they realized I was much older than what they were expecting. Well, that's weird. I've never seen that. But despite their best efforts, Gracie remained stuck. I don't even know how it happened. Sure. I was just, they all say that. I was just <laughs> Fortunately, the 17-year-old stayed calm. Okay, try to turn the car off and see if it releases. It's off. Do you think there's any way your face could go here and your legs back there and then go through this way? He'll hold your shoulders. I'll grab your feet. Do you want me to cut the seatbelt? I mean, I, if we have no choice, we have to cut it. I don't know. I mean, that's the only thing I can come up with. Yeah. Finally, success. The fire department showed up and they had the tools to unlock the top of the seatbelt, which actually loosened it so I could slip out of it. Next up, a woman named Gracie Henderson got her hands stuck in her toilet. I thought maybe just something was just right up in there and I could grab it and problem solve. But instead, problem started. Gracie had reached into her toilet to retrieve a bracelet that had fallen in. Nobody was here. Nobody would ever know. I, if I found it, I'd pull it out, I'd wash my hands and be good to go, you know? But I didn't find it, <laughs> and I couldn't get my hands unstuck. Gracie's watch got stuck in the pipe. What's funny, she even works as an EMT. You know, it's not really stuck. I'm not really about to call 911 for this. Uh, we do all kinds of crazy, deal with crazy stuff, but I have never made a hand stuck in the toilet call. <laughs> And her hand wasn't just a little stuck. Responders had to remove the toilet from her bathroom, with Gracie still attached, of course. Do you want to break it? Yeah. Well, how else am I going to get it out? <laughs> Good news is, for 150 bucks, you can buy a new one. I know. A few taps of a hammer, and Gracie was no longer stuck to her toilet. Oh, my God. We told her to shield her eyes and, and kind of look away, and then, you know, we were just, just tapping on the porcelain that's, you know, I knew it was going to break fairly easy. Gracie promises to use a plunger next time. <laughs> this is it. This is my best friend from now on. And from toilets to Barney heads, Alabama teen Darby Reisner thought she'd try to prank her friends with a purple dinosaur costume. But the joke was on her. <laughs> No one could remove the headpiece. I started kind of getting panicky. I got to a point where I was feeling a little nauseous. Darby was taken to a fire station for help. They were just amazed. They thought it was hilarious. Turns out this wasn't even the first time Darby has gotten stuck in something. She once spent an hour and a half in a baby swing. Here's hoping she learned her lesson. And passengers on the flying dinosaur ride at Universal Studios in Japan found themselves stuck in an awkward position. That position being upside down, 60 to 90 feet off the ground. More than 60 passengers had to be rescued after being suspended for hours. Fortunately, there were no injuries and everybody got a safety helmet and a free ride on the emergency staircase. These kids got trapped in tight spaces. In 2023, this two-year-old also got stuck in an air vent. I'm like, oh my word, her body has gotten cut in half. Katie Burke put her twins down for a nap. She found McLean's head and arms poking out of the floor. 
Her sister Waylon was next to her. Waylon's pointing at her saying, stuck, stuck, and McLean's in the vent saying, stuck. And so I just lifted her right out. She came right out, thankfully, no cuts or scrapes or bruises or anything like that. Also in 2023, firefighters came to the rescue of this kid who got himself in a place he couldn't come back from, at least not on his own. The three-year-old reportedly stuck his head between the railings of a balcony. His saviors used some scary sounding tools to free him. Hopefully he learned his lesson. In another incident from 2023, a little girl was saved from a safe. Firefighters cut open the lock to rescue the child, who got stuck inside at a sporting goods store. The Wilmington, North Carolina Fire Department told WYFF-TV that the girl's sister accidentally locked her in. In 2016, a five-year-old boy got his head stuck in a drain pipe. The kid was attending a wedding with his parents in China when he became fascinated with the pipe. The boy's parents didn't know what happened until they heard him crying. Firefighters were called in to help get the boy's head out. Heart-stopping video. You're watching a five-year-old boy climbing into a cooler and getting trapped inside. It happened on the family patio in Pompano Beach, Florida. So we just returned from a day on the boat. We left the cooler outside to dry. My wife and I were inside putting things away. Unbeknownst to his parents, little Nicholas Waynes squished himself into the cooler. The latch didn't lock yet. He thought it would be fun to hide from his family. As it's playing tricks. But the trick turned dangerous in a split second. You can see the slight crack in the cooler before Nicholas sticks his little finger through and hits the latch, shutting the airtight lid. We heard this muffled scream and we had no idea where it was coming from. We ran outside. I'm looking over behind the barbecue. I'm looking around the pool. I'm looking around the couches. And then we're standing here and you still hear it. Rob opens the cooler. I grab Nicholas. He's just terrified and he just grabs onto me so tight and it was just really traumatizing for all of us. When I got locked I was scared like I got like locked in there forever. Robert and Maria Waynes want other families to realize the potential dangers of these coolers. When he lowered the cooler it was sitting on top like this. His little fingers pushed the, pushed the latch out. Now the cooler is locked. We hope that there are some changes to the latches on the coolers. This story brings to mind the tragedy that happened in Florida three months ago when three children lost their lives after being accidentally locked in a freezer. Nicholas was lucky and realizes he's learned an important lesson. Never do that again. He's a rambunctious little boy who's full of energy. He loves to climb. <laughs> Period. But no one ever expected six-year-old Major Ashmore would actually climb to the top of the 50-foot tree in his backyard. And I said, stop, stop. Branch after branch, little Major climbed higher and higher. In this cell phone video, you can see Major 50 feet up clinging to a branch. He asked his mom to call for help. Mom Kate Ashmore immediately called 911. My son has climbed a tree and he got stuck. Is his foot stuck or he's just scared to come down? He's just scared I mean, to come yeah. down. The fire department raced to the family's home in North Carolina. Usually such emergency calls deal with cats in a tree. Not this time. 23 years on the department, we've never had a call like this before with a child in a tree. When they saw how high the boy had climbed, and the sogginess of the backyard that couldn't support the weight of the hook and ladder, the firemen called for reinforcements. That's when the electric company sent a bucket truck. As the boy's mom looked on, operator Douglas Lane raised the bucket into position, inching closer and closer to Major. Just imagine, this was the boy's terrifying view 50 feet up. I told him just to be still. I was coming to get him and I put my arms out and told her to come to me. Down below, anxious mom held her breath. I was scared. All I could do was lock my eyes on him, you know, and kept yelling to him to not move. And then the big moment. When I grabbed a hold of him and got him in the bucket, the adrenaline kicked in and I was shaking. Mission accomplished. Yay! With Major safely in the bucket, mom was greatly relieved. The whole time I was praying, and then when he finally grabbed him, I was like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. He saved my son's life. 
job. There were plenty of high fives. Yeah! As for little Major, well, he learned a major lesson. No more climbing trees. This mom had the shock of her life when her toddler blurted out that something was wrong with his baby brother. My toddler came in, ran up to me and said, baby in. And I said, baby in where? And at that point, I was in a panic. Sadie Reedy said she'd stepped away from her two sons for just a moment to wash dishes. My oldest son proceeded to point to the vent. <laughs> it took me like 10 seconds to realize this awful thing is happening to me. There's no way my baby's in a vent. But it was true. 10-month-old Colson, there's the cute guy himself, had fallen eight feet down this dark and scary vent. She says her three-year-old had pulled off the grate and down went the baby. Police and fire dispatch. I have a caller. She is reporting that her 10-month-old baby is stuck in a vent. <laughs> Hang on, baby. <laughs> you can hear the mom sob as she calls 911. Rescuers size up that the baby is too far down the vent to pull out, so they head for the crawl space. And here it is, the tiniest of crawl spaces. An officer crawled in and was able to push the baby back up the vent. There's little Colson. He's filthy and looking perturbed, but not hurt. And here he is reunited with the police officers me? who saved the day. Do you remember me? Do you remember Mike? Huh? Little Colson may not remember, but mom will never forget, and she's taking no chances there'll be a next time. <laughs> Drilling that vent into place. A perfect day at the playground. Hi. Then this. <laughs> the cardigan clutching cutie gets the scare of her little life. It's just an image of a giant ant, but it really does look scary. I just saw their eyes because they were about maybe 20 feet back in the pipe. That was enough for Kelly Cape and her college friends to try to rescue a litter of kittens trapped in a drain at Quinnipiac University in Connecticut. It jumped in the drain and <laughs> tried to get them out, like just with my flashlight on my phone. But with no luck, they had to call for backup. I grabbed a few of my groundskeepers and they weren't even taking a break and came up here and put our heads together. 12 hours later, with the help of public safety, groundskeepers, and more, all four little kittens found themselves on new ground. I didn't know this many people would be here for this. I mean, uh, I love cats. I wanted to do anything to get them out. Good thing cats always land on their feet. Now a real life underground adventure, just like the movie Goonies. These kids got lost in a sewer, but, but fortunately one of them had a cell phone and thanks to a very patient 911 operator and a lot of luck, they were rescued. Here's Amber Cagliano. Trapped deep inside a sewer system. This exclusive video shows their plight as a 911 operator tries to lead first responders to the youngsters. Keep talking, keep screaming. No! We went too deep to the point where we couldn't get out. The five friends were exploring the sewers with only the light of a cell phone guiding them. All of a sudden, they lost their way. It's reminding many of the movie The Goonies, where a bunch of pals go on an underground adventure. How are we going to get out of here? Amazingly, sixth graders Corey, Declan, and Giovanni, and two other friends got a cell phone signal and called 911. We're stuck in the sewers. You're stuck where? In the sewers. What did that feel like to be lost in a tunnel like that? Very scary and very, like, confusing. Tell me number four. A city official who knows the sewer system gets on the line. Was the sewer left, right, straight? Where was it? I need you to guide me. Right. How long did you walk for? We walked a lot. Rescuers seem tantalizingly close. We can't understand you! Shut up. They want you to scream and yell, call for help. <laughs> keep screaming, guys, keep screaming. I want you guys to scream as loud as you want. This video captures the moment everyone was hoping for. We got it, we got it, we got it. We have all five children removed from the sewer. Andrew Gannon is Declan's father. They were just shaken up more than anything else. You know, they were, they were, they were scared. They were super scared. Unlike the Goonies movie, 
these real-life Goonies didn't find a long-lost treasure, just a lot of sewage. But they did come away with some valuable lessons. Yeah. You learned a lesson? Not to climb into sewers. Keep cleaning, guys. Keep cleaning. I want you guys to clean as bad as you want. Yeah! And yes, the three boys we spoke with have all been grounded. Being trapped in a cave is frightening enough, but this dog survived being in a Tennessee cave with a bear for three days. A dog named Charlie fell down an extremely narrow cave shaft and became stuck about 40 feet down. Walden's Creek Volunteer Fire Department says two rescuers descended into the cave to rescue the trapped hunting dog but they found another animal they weren't planning on, a 200-pound black bear. For their safety, the team left the cave and set up trail cameras to monitor when the bear exited the close quarters it was sharing with Charlie. When the bear left, they came back for the dog. There he is. Come on, big guy. Come here, Charlie. Come on, buddy. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Good boy. Come on, boy. Despite sharing a cave with a bear, authorities say Charlie was hungry and a bit dehydrated, but otherwise in good condition. All right. hold on, hold on, hold on. 17 animals, horses, bulls, and cows had to be rescued from being stuck in the mud at a California farm after it rained for several days. Rescuers used ropes and animal sleds to get the first six to safety. Once the large animals were in good hands, then the smaller ones were rescued. A skid steer cleared a path of the mud in order to free the 11 remaining. It took about five hours for the entire operation, according to the LA Times. Hold, 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 hold. From here, the farm animals were taken to an animal shelter to be evaluated by veterinarians. The video is terrifying. Three friends trapped in an elevator, up to their necks in filthy sewer water and no way out. Now I know what to have a nightmare about tonight. Could not imagine oh, no. what it must have been like to be in that elevator. It happened during an epic storm in Omaha, Nebraska. Tony Liu and two friends took the elevator down to check out the floods when water started pouring in through the vents. Pretty soon, they were in neck deep water. How scary was this? Honestly, I would say this is number one, the most scariest thing in my life. Yep, hands down. Please, the water is up to our necks in the elevator. Tony reached out to his roommate to get help. I told him, hey, uh, I'm I'm gonna die in here if you guys don't come and try to do something. The roommate came down to lend assistance, but then found himself Always up to his pool. neck in water. The water was up to your neck at one point. Did you think you were gonna die? I just thought it was gonna be like ankle level or maybe knee level, and then it just kept rising. After a 10 minute struggle, they were able to get out. I had to start swimming out of the elevator. Uh, to get to the stairs to get to the main lobby. For Tony and his friends, they never expected their Saturday night to turn into the worst nightmare of their lives. It's just crazy because you don't you only see this in a movie. You don't you don't see someone trapped in an elevator every day with water filling up all the way to your head. It's a nightmare in the parking lot. Ma'am, can you hear me? A three-year-old girl and her 80-year-old great granny are pinned under the car. Where's the baby? Right here, in the stroller still. Cops say the driver was backing out and didn't see the woman pushing the stroller. Can you breathe, ma'am? You can hear the child wailing. Ah, oh, baby, baby, baby. It's okay. The Good Samaritans helped lift the car up with a jack. A police officer pulls the woman's groceries out to help her breathe. Her face was blue. She was barely able to take a breath. Incredibly, the little girl is still attached to the stroller. We need a knife. They need cut the straps something? and lift her carefully out. I got it. Then everyone turns their attention to the great granny. They haul her out too. How difficult was this rescue? I think it would have been much harder without the floor jack. It was difficult, but it was a big team effort. Cops say the car was backing out of the parking spot and apparently didn't see the great granny and girl. Lots of vehicles come equipped with a rear view camera these days that make backing up a whole lot safer. But this vehicle comes equipped with a front view camera as well. With the push of a button, I can see anyone or anything in the way. 
a valuable tool for keeping pedestrians safe. Ah, oh, baby, baby, baby. It's okay, okay. it's okay, it's okay. All right, hold on. The great grandmother currently is in critical condition. The three year old child is listed in stable condition. Investigators say the 23 year old driver remained at the scene and cooperated with police. It's not believed he was impaired. How did this cat get stuck inside an electrical cable underground? That's what firefighters in Turkey were trying to figure out. First responders in the Aegean province of Izmir responded after they got reports of noises in the area. The firefighters were able to find exactly where the feline was under all that dirt by using these thermal cameras. Then a careful dig revealed a little cat paw first, then the head as the feline literally clawed its way out of the hole. <laughs> A little shake, then freedom. Now, a little bit of food for no doubt a hungry cat, found to be in good health and happy to be out of a dark place and back into the light. Front loading washing machines can turn into death traps. Children climb inside, the door locks, the result, potential suffocation. That's what cops say happened inside this home in Orlando. This is not breathing, three year old. How did this happen? There was a three year old playing in a laundry room with his younger sibling, and at some point, uh, the three year old climbed into the front loading washing machine, and during that process, the door became shut. It may look harmless, but the machines should not be considered a toy, says Carolyn Forte, Home Appliances Lab Director at the Good Housekeeping Institute. The doors lock once the machine starts. And that's what they're designed to do. But once a child gets trapped inside, then it becomes a really dangerous situation. An estimated 3,000 children under age five have been rushed to the emergency room for injuries associated with front-loading washing machines since 2014. Parents can take steps to prevent such tragedies. The best thing you can do is engage the child lock and every machine we've seen always has them. This front end loading machine disables the controls when you press the child lock. A child could pull all they want the child lock is on, this door is not going to open. They won't be able to play inside. Russian sailors conducted an unusual animal rescue this week. They pulled a dog from an iceberg. The crew of an icebreaker near the Arctic noticed the fluffy white pup stranded on some sea ice. They said there was no way the dog could have survived for long out there, so they lowered a ladder and called to her. The canine came in from the cold and warmed up aboard the ship. Then the crew called around and were able to locate her owner. The dog, a one-year-old named Aika, had wandered off from a Russian town near the Arctic Circle the week before. Her owner, a woman named Svetlana, was happy to have her friend back and said that Aika was feeling much better. Another unusual animal rescue recently took place in Washington, D.C. Fireboats inspecting the Potomac River's Wilson Bridge noticed a peregrine falcon struggling to stay afloat. Reportedly, the floundering falcon was being circled by hungry catfish. The bird of prey had the good fortune of being plucked from the water before it became prey itself. Rescuers swaddled it in towels and took it to Washington's Wildlife Rehabilitation Center. In Ontario, Canada, first responders helped a baby deer to safety. After it got stuck in a trench, the team of rescuers gently brought the yelping fawn to ground level. They said Bambi's concerned mother was hovering in the woods nearby. And over the weekend, police in Iowa City rescued a piglet who had wandered into traffic. The little one was seen resting comfortably in a squad car before being taken to an animal care center. This is Inside Edition Digital. Powerful stories that change the way you think. Impactful investigations that change the way you see. How many times has your car been stolen? Five times. Yeah. What? Do you think that you're a responsible owner of tigers? I damn sure do. Mm, I love it. Heartwarming moments that change the way you feel. <laughs> amazing. Now available in a place that changes the way you watch TV. Inside Edition, streaming. The unfolding drama of the boys' soccer team trapped in a cave in Thailand has captured the world's attention. 
As experts worked around the clock to bring the boys to safety, people have tuned in, refreshed their browsers, watched, and prayed. The saga in Thailand is only the latest entry in a long series of people being trapped deep within the earth. Inside Edition recently spoke to Emily Mobley, who found herself in a similar situation in 1991. Mobley was part of a team exploring a cave in New Mexico. When a rock foothold broke loose, her leg was crushed. It was a challenge to navigate the cave's narrow depths. The rescue was about four and a half days from the time of the accident until we got out. In August 2010, a cave-in trapped 33 Chilean miners hundreds of feet underground, several miles from their mine's entrance. It took several days before rescuers could locate the 33 and determine if they had survived. Once the miners were found safe and sound, it took several weeks to work up a plan to bring them to the surface. The last Chilean miner was rescued in October of 2010, more than two months after the initial collapse. In the time since their ordeal, the miners have become celebrities of a sort, but some have also struggled with PTSD. The fame of the Chilean miners is rivaled by that of a single young victim. In 1987, 18-month-old Jessica McClure fell down a well at her aunt's house in Midland, Texas. A mining engineer helped lead rescue efforts, and after 58 hours, baby Jessica was saved. She's alive. What a fighter. Now 32, Jessica has no memory of the event, but her story has been told and retold countless times, including in a 1989 TV movie and in a 2017 People magazine series. You can't take life for granted. You really can't, because then at any point in time, it could be gone. In the baby Jessica incident, there were echoes of an earlier, much publicized well accident. In 1949, a little girl named Kathy Fiscus was playing with her sister and cousin in Southern California when she fell down an abandoned water well. Drills, derricks, bulldozers, trucks, and three giant cranes were moved to the scene. As her parents and rescuers rushed to the scene, the three-year-old's cries could still be heard. Desperate attempts to rescue Fiscus over the next several days brought thousands of spectators to the well site. TV station KTLA was broadcasting live from the site for over 24 hours, one of the first times television had been used to report on an event. Rescuers had to tunnel 100 feet into the earth to find Fiscus, but it was too late. The little girl was dead. Gently, they retrieved her body. Her grave marker reads, one little girl who united the world for a moment. Shortly afterwards, a country singer named Jimmy Osborne wrote a song about the sad event titled The Death of Little Kathy Fiscus. They called down to Kathy, but she never did see. Two decades before Kathy Fiscus, cave explorer Floyd Collins got a song too. The fate of Floyd Collins all led me on you well. In 1925, Collins became trapped in a narrow crawl space in the Crystal Cave. It's now part of the Mammoth Cave National Park in Kentucky. The rescue operation was reported breathlessly in the papers and on the radio. But all the media attention in the world couldn't keep Collins from dying from exposure over two weeks later. His body was recovered days later. In a bizarre footnote, Collins's corpse was put on display in a glass-topped coffin at Crystal Cave where it served as a tourist attraction for decades. Oh, in the name of Collins' song, The Death of Floyd Collins. I cried, oh, must I bury within this silent cave. There are others who have been imprisoned in the earth. Nine miners in Pennsylvania who made it, a little boy in Italy who didn't, and on and on. Our fascination with these hells in the ground reaches back even further. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Plato, the Bible. There's something about being trapped in a dark and lonely place, be it a cave or a well, that seems to stir the popular imagination. 74 days. That's how long this man has been living underwater. And you know what? He's not coming up for air. Dr. Joseph Deturi is living under the sea on a mission called Project Neptune 100. 
The Marine Resources Development Foundation says Project Neptune 100 combines medical and ocean research along with educational outreach. The idea here is to populate the world's oceans, to take care of the world's oceans by living in them and really treating them well. Deturi is drinking coffee, making meals, and literally sleeping with the fish. While he's down there, the medical researcher is also conducting experiments to see how the human body responds to long-term exposure to the highly pressurized marine environment. Time in the Atlantic Ocean off of the Florida Keys has not been lonely. Dettori has reached about 2,500 students in the online marine science and biomedical engineering classes he teaches. But there's one thing he misses about being on the Earth's surface. So the thing that I miss most about being on the surface is literally the sun. The sun has been a major factor in my life. Plans are for Dr. Deturi to continue living underwater for 100 days, 27 days longer than the previous 73-day record. He says beating the record has been nice, but it's not going to stop him now. We still have more science to do. The science doesn't stop here. Catch that kid! This youngster jumps into a trash can in a last-ditch effort to hide from police. And it was all captured on a neighbor's home security camera. Moments later, a cop walks by on the hunt. It was a scorching 90 degrees outside, but the 14-year-old sat in the trash can for 30 minutes, at which point he peeks his head up and hops out once he checked that the coast was clear. He casually walks away, then takes off. Homeowner Zach Pierce was home with his baby when it all went down. What was your reaction when you saw what was going on? Yeah, I saw him jump out and I go, that's a really gross spot to play hide and seek because that's what I thought was going on. How gross? He showed us what was inside that trash can. Baby diapers and cat litter uh, scoopings. So it doesn't smell too pleasant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's... I mean, you can smell it when it's hot out and it's full like that. I mean, you walk by 10 feet away, you can get a little whiff of it. <laughs> Turns out it was all for nothing. The kid was caught about an hour later. Police in Bend, Oregon say the youngster was wanted for theft. The cheers are contagious, even from the other side of the screen. You can't help but smile, even tear up, as rescue workers celebrate. A family in Syria being saved from the rubble caused by a devastating earthquake. One by one, they are pulled out after being stuck for over two days. Rescuers from the White Helmet Group lift the kids up high so that everyone can see they made it out alive. Then they were rushed to an ambulance. The 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck Syria and Turkey on February 6th. At least 11,000 people have been killed and thousands more injured as rescue and recovery work continues. Two people were sucked into a drainage pipe and it was all caught on police video. Florida's Escambia County Sheriff's Office says severe weather and torrential downpours caught many people off guard, especially drivers. Deputy William Hollingsworth was one of the officers helping stranded motorists. At one point, Deputy Hollingsworth exited his patrol car to approach a citizen who was trapped in these rising waters. The officer saw the person go underwater and attempted to rescue him. During the rescue attempt, both the citizen and Deputy Hollingsworth were sucked into the drainage pipe and were swept underneath the four-lane roadway of Highway 98. Authorities say the two men were underwater for about 30 seconds and traveled nearly 100 feet underwater. The officer and citizen resurfaced on the other side of the highway, shocked to be breathing. They waited for more help to arrive. Let's hold on to each other. Yeah. I got you. 
he was over there and I was having him come across. And he goes down. And I go in after him. I got stepped in drain pipe right by that marker and I went all the way underneath Highway 98 got spit out. Trauma can bond people and this experience has clearly done that. Me and you man. Alright, you got some experience for life and I appreciate it. The small county in Florida's Panhandle region has been experiencing severe thunderstorms with more in the forecast. David, can you believe what just happened to us? It's a terrifying moment. A mother is trapped in her car with her four kids while huge chunks of hail tumble down on them. She does her best to calm them down. Oh, you're okay. It's okay. It's okay. The hail is the size of golf balls. The ground is covered in it. It happened in Golden, Colorado as a freak hailstorm hit the area. While the damage was severe, no one in the car appeared injured. It's the heart-stopping video of a truck nearly hitting two people on the road. You can see one man waving frantically at the semi to warn the driver that a black car was broken down blocking the lane along a highway in Utah. The truck avoids hitting the car, but practically runs over two people on the side of the road. <laughs> Hysterical screams from little kids trapped on a school bus. Oh my God! Look Panicked and confused parents are desperate to get their kids off the bus. Get my son off the bus now! This was the frantic scene in Wichita, Kansas, after the bus full of elementary kids pulled into a parking lot at the end of the school day. The driver reportedly told students they weren't allowed to leave because they were too noisy. This is like a freaking nightmare. A school official was brought in to help. They won't listen to me. They won't okay. listen. Hey, sit down, please. Sit down. Adding to the mayhem, parents had to track their kids down when they didn't show up at their bus stops. Police were also called in to control the chaos. Leslie Zapata's eight-year-old daughter, Ariana, was terrified. Can you jump out the window to me? What sent them crying and into a panic is because she told them they were going to spend the night on the bus. Leslie was finally allowed to board the bus and take her daughter. School officials say the bus driver followed the school policy, which instructs drivers to pull over if students are out of control. Few people know what the boys in Thailand are going through like Emily Mobley. She was rescued from the deepest cave in America more than a quarter century ago. Emily, now 67, was on an expedition to map the Lechoguilla Cave in New Mexico. Just look what a tight squeeze it is. She was a mile and a half in when disaster struck. A boulder fell on her, crushing her leg. That's a good speed, guys. Doing great. Like the extraordinary rescue efforts in Thailand, a huge team mobilized to save Emily. Get the right side down. She was carried out on a stretcher through narrow passageways and up steep underground cliffs using an intricate system of ropes and pulleys. The rescue was about four and a half days from the time of the accident until we got out. You heard right, it took four and a half days to get her out. Now, Emily says she's closely watching the crisis in Thailand. This is a very complicated rescue. The best engineering minds in the world have been brainstorming ways to get the boys out. Billionaire Elon Musk and engineers from SpaceX even built a one-man submarine. It's actually a modified fuel tank from Musk's Falcon space rocket. It was tested at a high school pool in California. When they haul it out of the water, you can see there's a guy inside. That's a pretty tight fit, but the submarine is still too big to fit through the cave in Thailand. The boys are wearing wetsuits and full face masks like this when they make their epic five-hour journey out of the cave, guided by experienced divers in front and behind. A fleet of ambulances are standing by to take the four remaining youths and their coach to a helicopter for the flight to a hospital 37 miles away. They'll be quarantined for three days while their bodies recover from two weeks of being trapped underground. Dr. Robert Gladder is an ER doctor at New York's Lenox Hill Hospital. When you're in a cave, you lack sunlight. And without sunlight, your circadian rhythms are off. Circadian rhythms control our blood pressure, our heart rate. They're vital to our functioning in terms of our brain as well. Without the sunlight, your body starts to go a little haywire. A 
woman is trapped inside an elevator. Oh my God. <laughs> you can hear a witness outside the elevator telling firefighters oh the situation. New York City firefighters try to pry open the door. You can see the wheel on the outer door. We're yeah. just trying to engage that so this, this door opens. Okay. Okay. Finally, success. The door slides open. Yay! <laughs> and looky, looky, the rescuer is quite a hunk. Hello, thank you. The woman inside the elevator turns out to be pretty accomplished herself. She's a 27 year old dentist, Haley Logan. The story could have ended right there, but Haley the dentist was clearly smitten. She knew she just had to see her hero firefighter again. So she posted this slow-mo video on TikTok and the message, NYC, I need your help. Please find this man that rescued me from an elevator today. It worked. What's up guys? So my brother's at the firehouse, just showed me the video. The next day, the firefighter named David responded himself on TikTok. Haley literally swooned as she watched the video. Uh, I just wanted to make this video to say, uh, I'm glad that you're safe. Maybe I can buy you a drink sometime for saving my life. It's the least I can do. So will this elevator rescue be the start of a beautiful romance? I will keep you all updated. Oh! Yay! <laughs> Hello, thank you. These people got stuck in bathrooms. In 2017, honeymooners were trapped inside their bathroom as Hurricane Irma roared outside. We just moved into the bathroom. We've got the wind going about 100 miles per hour. You can really hear it outside, shaking the doors. Scott and Sarah Riggins were married the week before and were honeymooning on San Martin. We're tired. We're supposed to be over. In 2018, this woman was stuck in her tub for five days. She's in the bathtub. She's not able to get out. She's been down for about five days. Allison Gibson took a bath, and when she finished, she couldn't reach the handrail to lift herself out. I was sitting this way, and this is the bar I used to get out. And um, of course, it was behind me, so I couldn't reach it to get out. As the days went by, Allison battled hunger, darkness, and falling temperatures. When I was cold, I'd run the hot water. And then when I got thirsty, I ran the cold water and just drank water out of my hands. On day five, a postal worker noticed her mail was piling up. He alerted the neighbors. I was just sitting there, and next thing you know, I heard somebody yelling outside my window, so I yelled back. We just got into the house. She's screaming that she's stuck in the bathroom. She was very thankful. Um, obviously, she was embarrassed about the situation because she'd never had something like that happen to her before. I'm going to look into getting a walk-in tub. In 2021, this woman isolated in an airplane bathroom after testing positive for COVID mid-flight. She was flying to Iceland when she started feeling a sore throat and did a rapid test. When she saw the bad news, she voluntarily stayed in the bathroom for four hours. I went in the bathroom and I took the test and honestly, within two seconds, there was, there was two lines and I was hysterical. It was honestly the best thing for my anxiety and I just wanted everyone to be safe around me. Yeah, for four hours, it was just me and my phone in the bathroom. In November of 2023, police cars poured onto a golf course to go after a suspected bad guy, but no need to hurry because he was trapped in a porta potty. We couldn't believe that he went inside there. The bizarre case started when an allegedly stolen car crashed outside Milwaukee. The four people inside took off. Ann Mercogliano explains. Cops say one of the bad guys ran to the golf course. Not exactly a great place to hide with all that wide open space. So what'd he do? He jumped into a porta potty. Fortunately, a golfer saw what was happening and tipped the porta potty over. He made a quick decision to tip it over, walked away and said, good luck, buddy. Come out. Crawl out, dude. Don't do anything stupid. One cop put on gloves before he went anywhere near the suspect. Are you injured at all? I'm just scratching off. A nice, relaxing, beautiful day on the golf course. <laughs> In 2021, Britney Spears shared this photo and said she got trapped inside her bathroom after taking a bath at 2 a.m. The lock was stuck. I got locked in the bathroom and my boyfriend was sleeping, she said. After 30 minutes, security was able to free Britney. In 2015, Hillary Clinton staffers got locked in the ladies' bathroom for half an hour. They tweeted a group selfie that said, 
trapped in a woman's bathroom at Brooklyn HQ. Anyone handy with the credit card door unlock? From March of 2024, a pilot and a flight attendant stepped in to help a passenger stuck in the bathroom. I was in the laboratory and, and uh, tried to come out and the, uh, the knob to, to open the door locked. So I found myself stuck in a dark laboratory. I jokingly thought, oh, he's really milking the time in there. I finally heard a flight attendant say the word stuck. And I turned around and I was like, wait a minute, is someone stuck in the bathroom? I said, oh my gosh, I think that's my husband. He was told to kick the door with force as the pilot yanked from the outside. After 35 minutes, success. He shook the pilot's hand as he exited. Yeah, I was definitely embarrassed. Powerful stories that change the way you think. Impactful investigations that change the way you see. How many times has your car been stolen? Five times. Yeah. What? Do you think that you're a responsible owner of tigers? I damn sure do. Mm -hmm. Heartwarming moments that change the way you feel. <laughs> Amazing. Now available in a place that changes the way you watch TV. Inside Edition, streaming.